guys, welcome to the Joe Jaguar show. Let me show you guys this guy here. Now, before I get into uh, what it is, let me explain why I got it. So first, um, right now we're in uh, mid-July, actually a little bit more than mid-July, third week of July, uh, 2021, or November of 2020. I ordered a Mead 12-inch uh, Light Bridge Dobsonian, um, and it still hasn't come in. Um, the dealer tells me it could still be at least another six months, maybe more. Then we have to see what's going to happen. I ordered a 12-inch uh, Dobsonian, and that's for the deep sky objects when I go up north. Now, this year, I went up north once in a gray zone, four times last year. And what I normally bring up there is like an eight inch SCT. And what I found is that Angela's being brand new and her eyesight is not perfect. Uh, even showing her the, like the best stuff, like, uh, well, Andromeda Galaxy, uh, you know, in the fall, but even like Hercules Cluster, she says it looks good, but the way she's saying it, I'm not 100% sure if it's not wowing her, you know what I mean? And this is where a lot of people don't realize um, that um, when you're looking at deep sky objects, they actually say you have to start with an eight inch. I think sometimes when people read and they, it says eight inch, they think that's, you know, an eight inch is big enough. It's not. An eight inch is a start to the deep sky stuff and larger. So uh, it's recommended to have at least an eight, but anyway, even with an 8-inch SCT type of thing, it's not blowing her mind, uh, some of that stuff. Some stuff is in sort of impression, but it's not like it's jaw-breaking. So, um, since the 12 inches taking a long time, I then found a used 10-inch uh, daub. So, at 2 inches uh, from an 8-inch is a decent upgrade. Um, it's considerably, it's about 50% light, light gathering power. Um, so a 12 inch would be a lot more than that. So four inches would just be huge, but two inches is decent. But I have a friend, well, it's not a personal friend. He's on Canada wide Astro, uh, like myself. And um, he was gonna sell this guy. And I'm sure you've probably seen my other video where I did just a, uh, a quick rundown of the 10 inch daub and this guy and you can see how much smaller something like this is so my thinking is instead of the 10 inch daub this is like almost two feet the tube uh, less so it'll be better to carry it up north uh, when space is limited and again they were both the same size the 10 inch daub 10 inch uh, Schmidt and Tonian um, type of thing so I think this is gonna suit my needs better um, for the time being until I get that 12 inch. Now, if it doesn't come in, I'll have to think of something else. But my thinking is going up to a 12 for the deep sky stuff. I used to have a 16 inch daub twice and it's very big and heavy. Unless you're gonna leave it somewhere where it's gonna sit there all the time, um, I think it's gonna be too big for me right now to carry. Um, so I think a 12 is gonna be the max. Anyway, let's get into this guy. Okay, guys, so this is a 10 inch Mead Schmidt Newtonian. Um, Mead made these, now I'm not 100% sure of the, the exact dates, but it was around, you know, 2004 ish to maybe 2008 or 9, and then that was about it. Now, you don't see too many of the Schmidt Newtonians uh, out there, and I'll explain a little bit why. But anyway, so uh, it's you know, this is an F4, so it's about a thousand, 16 millimeter focal length. Um, so it's an F4 focal ratio, so it's going to be big and wild field. Now, I'm not going to be using this guy for high planetary crystal clear uh, detail or, or things like that. This is for me to see the deep sky objects, like again, I wanted to try to show Angelus the Hercules cluster, the Andromeda galaxy, the double cluster, um, M51, M81, M M82, all those deep sky stuff. Instead of using an eight inch, we're gonna be using a 10 inch, which is a two inch upscale, uh, but also being F4 or the SCT, 
being 2000 millimeter focal length, this one's basically half. So I'll get that wider field of view, um, which is going to be perfect. So this is what Mead used to make, um, and it was an F4. Uh, the person I got it off, Mike, he uh, put a moonlight focuser on here. Um, as you guys saw, my, my video had a Takahashi 102 TSA, and I as well put a, um, a moonlight dual speed two and a half inch large format. Now that sucker on the Takahashi was $713 Canadian. For a newt or a reflecting type, it's going to be a lot cheaper. But still, this focuser is probably a good, I would say, $450 uh, Canadian uh, at least, uh, maybe up to $500. Uh, so it is an expensive focuser, but it's a very smooth focuser. Back then, I believe they came with an 8x50 um, or a 9x50 straight through finder scope. It didn't come with it uh, this time, but that's okay. Me did sell it on this mount. Some of you are gonna say, hey, it's a little bit undermounted. Now, originally, me had them on the LXD 55. This is the 75, which is a huge improvement. Now, on the six and eight inch is okay. On the 10 inch, a lot of people are gonna say it's kind of uh, undermounted. Again, I'm going to be looking at low to medium power only and faint stuff like globular clusters, nebulas, and uh, galaxies. I'm not looking at fine detail, high planetary power where I want it to be rock solid. So this is going to be more than fine for what I need. Um, anyway, um, and I want to show you the glass uh, in a second. And again, basically there's nothing more to, to tell you. Um, the, the LXD 75 had two inch steel legs where almost every mid-size mount now comes with 1.75 inch steel legs. It's like the manufacturers skimped out a little bit of the metal and cost uh, now compared to the two, the two inch uh, legs. Um, anyway, this is also, it's on its lowest format and it's actually the perfect size and I'm five foot seven. So uh, depending on your angle, of course, it can go a lot higher too. Of course, being all the way at the bottom is gonna help being more steady and rock solid as well. Now, let me show you the front, if you guys would like to see it. Okay, so as you can see here, the, um, the corrector plate is a nice deep purple. I believe this is the high ultra contrast coatings and you can see the mirror down there. And I think you could kind of just see that secondary mirror uh, kind of right there. And it is pretty large for this guy. Um, and the way you access the, the uh, secondary mirror is right there. So anyway, so I think this is gonna be good. And if you guys ever thought of uh, a scope like this, I'll just give you a little rundown. This could be a very good size for you. Now, why? Now, what does it have a lot of coma in an F4 system? But remember, it's a Schmidt Newtonian. Let me flip you around. So, it's a Schmidt Newtonian F4. Some of you might be thinking it's going to have huge coma. Now, remember too, because of the Schmidt corrector plate, it's it's it helping on the coma. Think of it this way. This is an F4 system, but because of the corrector plate, it's bringing the coma a minimum of one F-stop better to maximum 1.5. So for instance, the coma, if you were to buy a normal uh, reflecting telescope that was F4, the coma is gonna be probably very near to like 35, 40% of that field of view in an F4 system. Now, uh, Orion and Skywatcher makes a Quattro, which means F4. That's where they get the name from. So they have a 10 inch F4 and it does not have no uh, corrector plate type of thing, but it does have a parabolic mirror. So views will be decent, but the coma is gonna be very big. And that's why in that type of scope, you have to buy the coma corrector. If you don't, images are gonna be really bad. Now, back then, again, so 
uh, you know, this is an F4, and back then with this uh, corrector plate, is adjusting it so it's like, it has the coma equivalent to an F5 system, maximum F5.5. So just showing you, um, even with a spherical mirror, this is correcting for a lot of the uh, aberrations. Now, everything, no. There's still gonna be some coma, uh, again, it's only correcting uh, about, you know, one F factor better to 1.5. So it's, it's, it's an improvement, uh, but it's not going to be perfect either. However, what you're getting, though, is something that's just more portable uh, and more light as well. Now, being that it has the corrector plate here, you're going to need a Ducat. Now, I just ordered one. Uh, might be about a week, I would think. So when I, hopefully when next time I go up north, I'm gonna use it because if you don't have a dew cap or some dew prevention, it's gonna do up because it has that glass in the front. Very similar to a Schmidt Cassegrain and a Max Utah. So you definitely need it. Um, that's really about it, guys. So that's what, you know, that's why I got it. That's why I'm gonna be using it. And uh, yeah, that's, that's really it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Now, why don't they make this type of system now? And here is why. So back in the early 2000s, parabolic mirrors were still pretty expensive. So they either made regular uh, reflecting telescopes. A lot of them had, you know, a spherical, uh, spherical mirror, but they were, you know, F8. Not the best quality once you get, you know, under F8. So me tried this design, basically correcting for a lot of the coma, and it did kind of work. Uh, Celestron even had a version, it wasn't a full corrector plate, it was um, maybe a two inch corrector. Uh, it wasn't in the focuser, like the, the cheap ones you see these days, it was in front of the, the secondary mirror. Again, that didn't last very long. And the reason is, after um, getting close to the mid, uh, 2000s and on that's when they started making parabolic mirrors started becoming cheaper and so it just made sense for all the manufacturers to start making uh, you know instead of giving them with a spherical mirror you can make them it became standard like an 8 inch f5 um, a 10 inch f4.7 you know that type of thing with a parabolic mirror it'd be a little bit longer but then you, you don't have that cost uh, and that uh, manufacturing of the corrector plate. So you can just get rid of it completely and just have a regular reflecting telescope um, with a parabolic mirror. And that's why basically you don't see them anymore after this design, after the 2007, uh, 2008, Mead stopped making them, not many more. I I'm not even sure off the top of my head if anybody else makes them uh, currently. I don't think so, just because now parabolic mirror is pretty much standard with uh, most reflecting telescopes. Um, so th they're just doing it that way. So uh, again, the eight inch F5 and that stuff, the six inch F5 uh, reflecting telescope with the parabolic mi mirrors were becoming the standard uh, for a while and they were uh, making them at good quality, cheaper prices. So they basically scrapped this design and just went that way. Now again, you can get something quattro, which is like if you want a 10 inch, for instance, a 10 inch F4 quattro, you're looking at at least around, I think they're at minimum $1,000 Canadian, I think even more up to 1,200 for the OTA. I'm not talking about with the whole tripod mount. So they are kind of expensive. Um, if, you, if you get the F5 version, Coma is better. Um, and most people, I would say if you're more visual, I would say stick to the F5 system. I have never needed a coma corrector on an F5. Not too many people do, but once you get to the F4, it's pretty much almost mandatory. If you're gonna be using it for visual, you have to have it. And even people doing imaging, you need that coma corrector as well. Um, anyway, so that's it. So that's why they don't really make Schmidt Newtonians anymore. Um, it's just easier. Um, just to make a regular parabolic reflecting telescope. Anyway, uh, that's it. Like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you next time on my channel.